Hello YouTube, thanks for joining in. For those of you who know my channel, uh, the context of this video is part of a documentary that I have been making and this is the, probably the last in the series of, or last in the series. Now, um, so the idea was from the very beginning to get a panoramic view, a circular view uh, of all these sides of the house. So I've done a couple of interviews with the socialist group, the liberal democrats, the Christian Democrats didn't answer me. Um, I had wanted to uh, interview UKIP also. Uh, they responded to me, but Nigel Farage wasn't available. So I needed someone from the right, and um, Nick Griffin agreed to do the interview. Now, I just want to make it very clear to everyone, because he's a very controversial person. I am not a member of the BMP. I am not a supporter of the BMP. I'm not even British, okay? so. Please don't shoot the messenger, okay? I just wanted to talk to him about religion because I've never heard him speak on humanism and atheism and that is my agenda, that's all I care about. All right, uh, comments are welcome as usual, everyone. Leave them below. However, I would stress, if Nick Griffin represents the boogeyman of boogeyman's for you, the very personification of evil or something, that's up to you. Say the comment, or if you want to say something nasty, say it to him, not to me, okay? Don't shoot the messenger. So here's the video. Nick Griffin, thank you very much for your okay. time today, I really appreciate it. Um, as I've explained to um, my subscribers and uh, the YouTube community and indeed the world in general, um, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, um, uh, you know, I know Nick Griffin is quite con controversial for many of you, but um, the project and documentary I've done, as I said in the intro, I've done this, uh, this uh, documentary series Nick, about, uh, you know, why members don't talk about humanism, mm -hmm. atheism or whatever, I mean, uh, and how it relates to civil liberties and other things. I have done two from the socialist group, one from the Liberal Democrats, the Christian Democrats didn't answer me, UKIP did, but Nigel wasn't available. And um, Nigel, if you're watching, <laughs> I know you're well recovered from the plane accident, but you know so we have drank a lot of Guinness together, okay, and um, yeah, that's, I, I won't settle for anything less. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Um, the purpose of it was to give a sort of panoramic view Nick, on these things, and it may not be a, in your comfort zone, and uh, as I say, I'm not here to attack you, I just want to, because the, the exercise would be meaningless, un, until, you know, I covered from left yeah, to right. Sure. I, I say left, right. wings, left wing, right wing, I don't have wings, I'm not a bird, I'm not interested. <laughs> okay, listen, you're unique also because the previous <coughs> members I've spoken to, um, they're uh, committed atheists and humanists and all that, mm -hmm. and even though the, the party, the BMP, is declared honest manifest as secular, I know you're a religious man, yeah. well, Anglican. Um, uh, um, yeah, exactly. Anglican-ish, which means I'm a lost sheep without a shepherd. You're a lost sheep. All right. Well, that even preempts my next question, because I was going to say, what role does that play in your life, in your views and all that? None whatsoever in terms of my actual sort of you know, day-to-day -day life yeah. and so on. Uh, like most um, native Brits, um, yeah, church really is for... Hatchings, matchings, and dispatchings. Yeah. Uh, it's primarily a cultural yeah. thing more than anything else. So I'm, I'm a theist, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have any strong convictions. Yeah. Um, I regard people who have strong atheist convictions and strong Christian traditions, all of them as religious. Yeah. It's all, I definitely know the answer. Yeah. I definitely don't know the answer. Sure, yeah. Indeed, excellent. You know, it's just, but I'm not, I, I grew up Irish Catholic and later brainwashed in Jehovah's Witnesses. That's why I. Good uh, heavens. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll cut to the chase. So time. now you go to another dogmatic cult. <laughs> well, it's not a dogmatic cult because we don't, it, it's non belief. That's all we're saying. It's just, um, I mean, from the perspective of, give you like two recent stories on BBC, right there, headline stuff I saw the other day, and it's current. Um, the, the situation in Egypt, for example, mm -hmm. you know, the Coptic, an old, yeah. one of the oldest religious uh, 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 Christian groups, and they're fighting with Muslims and they were burning their churches down and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, from my perspective, it's that, no, no, it's not a dogma. I'm just, when, when you hear a news report on any channel, they will dance around, do you understand, the mm -hmm. subject and yeah. analyze it in every <clears throat> other dimension. But no commentator will ever, ever say, isn't it dreadful what religion does to people? Mm. Do you understand? I mean, if you think of it, they're all Arabic. 
Mm. They all speak, to, they're, all, yeah, sure. they're all the same colour and ethnic race and all the rest of it, but they can kill each other over that. And mm. indeed, people have died. Um, I saw the funniest thing in the world the other day. It would be funny unless it was, if it wasn't sad. And again, a headline BBC, where um, Orthodox Jews, who live parallel to another community of ultra-Orthodox Jews, um, they were actually fighting each other and abusing the children going to school because they, they, they said that they, they, they were sluttish and they mm -hmm. weren't dressed up enough. You know, these guys with the silly yes, hats and yeah. the, the thing, you know? Um, there was one the other day with the Amish <laughs> cutting each other's beards off, wasn't there, as well? <laughs> so, well <laughs> and nobody... <laughs> but, it, it, yeah, but, I mean, people can watch this. It's like, I always use the illusion. Um, I know it's a bit silly, but uh, I, I, and it's deliberately provocative. I say, the monotheistic faiths, okay, is like um, three alcoholics. Okay. Now I have a beer myself, don't ever panic. But I, so it's like you have your beer alcoholic, your strictly wine alcoholic, and your strictly functioning uh, whiskey alcoholic. Okay? They kill each other sometimes, they fight about it. Um, sometimes they're moderate. And the other person who's an Andre is looking back and saying, you know, you can say everything about it, the, the, the net result of the damage they've done. Remember, it's a, this is a euphemism for religion. Um, but you can never comment on the fact that they're alcoholics in the end. Do mm -hmm. you understand? And so atheists are kind of like recovering alcoholics. <laughs> okay, right. enough of the nonsense. Listen, when I saw you, everyone, um, you know, everything that comes out of Nick Griffin's mouth and all the rest of it, I'm, 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 I'm Irish. But in terms of my secular views, um, I saw your appearance on BBC Primetime, or Primetime, sorry, Question Time. Yeah. Okay. And I was prepped. As someone pretty indifferent, I am not involved in British politics, I was prepped, um, uh, you know, to think, that's Nick Griffin, I'm supposed to, like, close my ears and hate he, everything he has to say. Well, I'm sorry, and we're going to show the clip now. This is a quotation that uh, you made, twice, I think, about uh, Islam. It was wicked and vicious, you confirmed it the other day. You start off, why is it a wicked and vicious faith? because it treats women as second-class citizens, because it says that a woman victim of rape should be stoned to death for adultery, and because it orders its followers to be harsh with those of the unbelievers who live near to them, and it ordains as a religious duty the murder of Jews as well as other non-Muslims. That's in the Quran. there's no point shaking your head. There are good points about Islam. Uh, for instance, it opposes usury. It wouldn't have let the banks run right in the way that the Labour Party and the Tory Party have done. There are good points, but it doesn't fit in with the fundamental values of British society, free speech, democracy, and equal rights for women. So what's your policy on Islam? I agree with everything you said regarding Islam in that. You know, um, I, I, I'm not supposed to, though, am I? You know, I, I agree with everything you said in terms of Islam, because, um, you know their whole uh, policy. Um, I, I'll break it down to this. Um, it's, yeah, I have, of course, got the drop on me because I don't know what I said. Because it's a couple of years ago <laughs> and you've seen it recently. <laughs> You'll have to see it in the cut in the video. <laughs> I'll say this to viewers. Here you are, everyone. I know you can't read it, but this was a suggested <coughs> question I sent to Nick and other members. Um, just bear with me. I don't want to take this all day. We have limited time. I said, British PM David Cameron recently mirrored the views of Angela Merkel, saying that the multicultural experiment had failed in Europe. Linked to this, we have seen high-profile cases in Europe from the minaret controversy in Switzerland, the banning of the burqa in France, which I made a video on, and well done France, uh, and the rise of popularity of Gert Wilders in the Netherlands. Uh, we stand against racism and xenophobia, yet there is a real fear and misunderstanding of Islam in Europe, which has led to the increase in the support for right-wing views. For me, this is not only a question, uh, or an ethnic question, but also, an, by implication, a religious question too. And the question follows, I'm going to post to Nick, how do you think we can best interface with our fellow Muslim citizens in terms of integration and social cohesion when the Koran discourages? Now, I use the word discourage, it depends on interpretation of Sharia, others would say completely forbids intermarrying with non-Muslims. That's kind of my question, Nick, to you. I'm, yeah. I mean, I want to follow up that in terms of saying that what I say by intermarrying, it's not literally a ceremony. It is the whole thing in conversation. Um, I, I have no problem with anyone's race or color or anything else. To simplify it, I like women. <laughs> and I don't like the fact that I can't chat a girl up, do you understand, because of a particular fate of falling in love with her. That annoys me, because it's not on my part, you know. Um, but I'm just saying that when you intermarrying, intermixing, social cohesion, 
if I sit down with you, imagine I, like, you're demonized, and I sit down with you, and I learn your mind, do you understand? You talk to me. There is a potential that, you know, you get to know someone, you get to respect them, and when you get to respect them, the, the hate, the, yeah. the, the thing just evaporates. And that's, that's what I'm about. But as I say, and I, I'm probably maybe more outspoken than you on it, it is, I see it as totally intransigent in Europe with Muslims, because I cannot, I can't bridge that. I have no problem to have a coffee with them, but, but they, they don't intermarry, so it's a ghetto and can only be a ghetto. Yeah, well, first of all, I don't think that it's the job of any political party or government to interfere in affairs of the heart. Yeah. Uh, because if you've got a, a government which is that powerful, it's got far too much power. Mm -hmm. So if you have smallish numbers of people or different cultures or races which are reasonably close in terms of culture and outlook and attitude, then you can have a fair degree of intermixing, whether it's uh, social, up to marriage and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of those things that happens. Uh, and given that you, there is a problem in large parts of history where there's clashes, it's because there's two peoples mm. struggling for one place, mm -hmm. uh, then one way of dealing with that problem is to mix the two so mm. much mm. so that they become one, mm. clearly. With Islam, I simply don't believe that's possible, mm -hmm. uh, particularly because it's obviously it's dominated by the male, uh, which means that the, the interaction between our communities in terms of uh, marriage and sex and reproduction is overwhelmingly uh, their males and the women of other communities, not just ours, mm. uh, Sikhs, West Indians and so on in the case of Britain. Uh, and it's about them taking other communities' women mm -hmm. and it doesn't cut the other way. So it's not actually about mixing, mm. it's about, it's part of the expansionist philosophy that underlies Islam. Mm. Uh, and it's about conquering other people and other places for Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not to say that they all do it, but that's the dynamic of the religion, mm -hmm. it's the dynamic of the community. And if we were seeing each new generation was more and more westernised, mm -hmm. then he could say, well, it's going to go away. All we've got to do is be tolerant and nice to them, and X years down the line, there'll be no, no problem. Mm -hmm. But far from that, each generation, certainly the ones that I come across, each generation is more radical, more Islamic, more other than mm -hmm. us. Yeah. So the problem will get worse.